Okay, so welcome back again to my channel. Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Drummer Adams and I just want to greet everyone a pleasant morning, a pleasant afternoon, a pleasant evening. And for some of you, maybe you're watching this um, ng madaling araw. So magandang, madagandang, madaling araw din po sa bawat isa. So hello everyone. So again, welcome back to my channel and I hope today you will also be enjoying your time, your moment to learn something new today and i'm very much excited to share to you what we what i have in store for you so the last time i was discussing all about your syphilis i was discussing about your hiv and for today what i will be discussing will revolve around your gonorrhea so alongside with your hiv alongside with your syphilis one another one good example again of emerging community acquired sexually transmitted diseases or infection is your gonorrhea so are you excited so because i for one is very much excited to finish this up and this will be the last topic for this time so what i have for you this morning is all about your syphilis your gonorrhea so i finished the syphilis a while back and now we go to your gonorrhea so what is gonorrhea all about what is go what is gonorrhea all about so let's dig in to our um discussion so gonorrhea is of course caused by your neisseria gonorrhea which is a bacteria okay a gram negative cocci that usually occurs in pairs so later on i will be showing you a picture of your neisseria, neisseria gonorrhea and you will actually be seeing that some of these are actually um appearing in cocci shape and they actually occur in in your in pairs so you, most of the time we describe your neisseria as actually a gram negative cocci in pairs and when you look at it in the, under the microscope first they are intracellular you can actually usually find them within your wbc and aside from that they actually mimic a coffee bean sh a, a coffee bean like shape when you see them so maybe you've seen this um in the internet already and you can actually see them immediately so Usually, once we found out an intracellular diplococci within pairs within the, the WBC, and these are gram-negative, the one that we are suspecting already is your Neisseria gonorrhea. So, the, they cause infection in the genitals, in the rectum, and even in the throat. So, similarly to your syphilis, your, your gonorrhea is also being transmitted by direct contact to um a lesion or not a lesion actually a pus or um any area of the body of the patient that has or that are showing symptoms of your gonorrhea so aside from the infections are usually found in your your genitals and your rectum and your throat aside from that your gonorrhea is also mo very much common among teens and young adults so as you can see um if you've watched a lot of um if you actually watch a lot of um us series already there are actually usually two types of um sexually transmitted infections that they talk about it's either your chlamydia or your gonorrhea so chlamydia or gonorrhea are very much common among teens because of of course um your um sexual intercourse and usually, according to the Centers of Disease Control, when we talk about teens and young adults, this ranges from 15 years old to 24 years old. Okay? So it's very much common in that age. So, as you can see, ayan, I'll be disappearing for a while so that you can see your gonorrhea. So on your, on your screen, you can actually see that this is your diplococci. This is a, a gram stain of your Neisseria gonorrhea. So as you can see, you have here your, you actually have here your, um, your diplococci, your gram negative, your gram negative 
coxide in pairs intracellularly. So you can actually see that. And once a, a medical technology is already uh, see this, automatically they would actually um, be alerted that it is possibly your gonorrhea. And what are the usual symptoms that you can see? So of course, as, um, as mentioned a while back, it can appear in your genitals, in your throat, and even in your your anal area. So usually, um, the symptoms are just a regular sore, or a sore throat. And of course, we have in your rectum, itching, soreness, bleeding, and painful bowel movement. So you can actually see that in that, in that area. So those are the usual symptoms in your rectal area. Aside from that, in the female gen, in the, in females, you can actually experience, um, vaginal bleeding, painful and burning urination, and of course, increased vaginal discharge, okay? Increased vaginal discharge. That's why most of the time, the first thing that they that the doctors will be requesting are, of course, your um, urinalysis. And eventually, if still um, they are actually um, have reported that there is a numerous amount of bacteria within your urinalysis, they will now start to progress to your, your culture and sensitivity. And eventually, they will now be identifying that it is your gonorrhea. So what about for the male? So for the male, they actually have swollen testicles, painful and burning urination, and of course, discharge in your penis. Okay? So that's why here in the Philippines, this is actually the, your gonorrhea um, in layman's um, lingo. They actually call it tulo because most of the time, both in your women, both in, in your men, they actually would have discharges in your vagina and in your penis. So most of the time, those kinds of discharge are actually indications of gonorrhea. That's why you have to have a check. Okay, so moving on now, okay, moving on to your pathogenesis. So how does your, um, how does your gonorrhea, your Neisseria gonorrhea um, develop into your disease? So your gonococci, so your gonococci, your Neisseria gonorrhea attacks the mucous membrane of the genital or urinary tract of either your eye, your rectum, and your throat that results to acute suppuration or suppuration or post production so i'm a go um i'm just gonna discuss um one thing about this so a while back i was able to dis mention that it can appear in your throat your rectum and in, in your genital urinary tract why do we see now in your eyes okay why do we see it in your eyes so imagine this when a baby or when an, a newborn is delivered through your vaginal canal so there is where your gonorrhea, your gonococci is residing. The baby would also be passing through that vaginal canal and they will also be contracting that bacteria. And after that, um, it will actually be um, um, be con um, directly um, in contact with your eyes. So there is actually um, a condition called your ophthalmia neonatorium. So your ophthalmia neonatorium is not a Harry Potter spell, but actually a condition which is actually a can lead to blindness in your newborn if not treated. So aside from your genitourinary tract, your rectum, your throat, in your eyes, that can also be um, a site where your gonococci will attack and eventually causes post-production or suppuration around the eye. And eventually, if left untreated, can cause blindness to your newborn. Okay, so aside from that, so the for the infected uh, males, urethritis is very much um, very much common with yellow creamy pus and painful urination. And usually, urethral infection can be asymptomatic. Okay, usually asymptomatic. That's why sometimes you can go along. Um, spreading the disease without actually knowing it because for men it is actually um some urethral urith infection can be asymptomatic okay so for the females on the other hand we have your primary infection that involves your endocervix that will extend to the urethra and to your vagina 
So it may actually progress even into your uterine tube causing your sal salpingitis or the inflammation of your fallopian tube. So as far as your um, uterine tube, it can actually go there. So no wonder why even your newborn can actually be um, infected with your with gonorrhea. Okay, so this is usually the um, the pathogenesis of your 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 Neisseria gonorrhea, your Neisseria gonorrhea, or your gonorrhea. So number one and the very much common thing that we can observe is actually the discharge both in male and in your female. So let's go now to the diagnosis. But before again, I go to the diagnosis. Um, I just want to remind everyone that it can also appear in your newborn, again, ophthalmia neonatorum, whereby it can actually even cause a left untreated blindness, okay? So for the diagnosis, how do we diagnose your gonorrhea? First, of course, let's talk about your specimen. Your specimen can range up until your pus and secretion. So usually... Um, we collect it from the urethra, from the cervix, or from the rectum, even in the conjunctiva, and even in your throat. So for those type, for those uh, pus, eh, pus, you can actually collect that in your cervix. So I, for myself, had the experience collecting samples um, bo for in a male patient. Okay, so that's how we practice it. Usually, you will be collecting it. Um, you will be collecting it. So what I did is actually to collect a. Um, a penile discharge from that patient. So you can actually just have your, your of course, you have your specialized swab there, and then you will be um, collecting it from the, urit from, the, um, from the urethra. So usually you can actually see the pus and secretion, and that's your goal, to actually, I, um, to actually collect the pus and secretion. So you can also have it in your rectum, in your, in your conjunctiva, in your eyes, and even your throat as your throat swab. Aside from that, you also have your synovial fluid. And maybe some of you are asking what are synovial fluid. This is actually a fluid that is found in your synovial, in your synovial joint. So they actually act as lubricant are lubrications in your joint. And maybe you're wondering, why do we have your synovial fluid? In your synovial fluid, um, there is actually um, this thing called your gonococcal arthritis that your, gono your, your, gono your gonococci can even migrate to your joints, causing, pain, um, causing painful or arthritis in your joints. Aside from that, you can also be having your... Um, stain smear in your stain smear in your so here you will be using the pus the secretion from your urethra your cervix and you will actually be doing the gram staining so the gram staining is very important because this will be this will serve as a screening test for gonorrhea so as you can see a while back i showed you a picture so that is a gram stain so again a gono a, your neisseria gonorrhea is a gram negative cocci so if you see that, you will actually be alerted that, hey, it is possible that this patient has your gonorrhea. Aside from that, we also have your blood culture. So your blood culture, so your blood culture, you collect that using your modified Thayer Martin. So modified Thayer Martin, I hope you will be um, sticking up until your bacteriology and you will be, um, we will be discussing there what are different medium or the collecting some collecting media collecting um collecting uh, vials collecting system that we will be using and collecting the samples so for your blood culture we do your culture medium using your modified Thayer Martin so usually we have different types of collecting system and we also have a specific culture media or culture medium for your um, nice area, which is your modified Thayer Martin. Aside from that, when using your modified Thayer Martin, when using your modified Thayer Martin, we also um, incubate it in an atmosphere that there has that there that is having five percent carbon dioxide at thirty seven degrees. So your nice area gonorrhea are actually capnophilic. Okay, capnophilic. They are. Um, they actually require an increased amount of carbon dioxide, 5% carbon dioxide, for them to grow. So aside from collecting it, um, 
plating it inside your ta- modified tear margin when you incubate it you incubate it at 37 degrees centigrade and also with increased carbon dioxide levels up to 5% aside from that okay aside from culture medium you can also have your serological testing like your immunoblotting your radioimmunoassay and your enzyme link immunoassay sorbent or your ELISA so these are the usual um, diagno- diagnostic test that we do. So for your serological testing, the usual samples that we have are also your serum and also genital fluid. So um, this serological fluids, okay, this serological fluid and serological testing rather are very important because somehow um, compared to your gram stain, when you do your serological testing, it's much more sensitive and specific to your gonorrhea. Okay, so let's go to, the, um, I'm actually approaching the end of this discussion. Let's go to your treatment. So what are the usual treatment for your your gonorrhea? So we have, before you can have it by your penicillin, your tetracycline, your spectrum, Mycine, your quinolone, your cephalosporine, your ceftriaxone, and azithromycin. This is the last recommended dual treatment as of today. Okay, as of today. And maybe um, you have already have seen the some articles that there have already been a um, a resistance strain of your Neisseria gonorrhea. So when I say resistance strain, none of these things, okay, none of these things that you see i don't know how do i yeah n- none of these things that you can see in the list are actually able to kill or actually ad- arrest the bacteria anymore so this treatment are very important okay this treatment are very important so again i just want to thank everyone for tuning in in this video so if you actually have any questions please do comment down below in this youtube chat in this youtube channel and you can also send me an email okay so i'll show you my email here there you go so you can also um email me and and send me whatever questions that you have for me all right so having said that okay so having said that i just want to um thank everyone for watching this video so if you have any questions just do um, send me a message. So again, this is Jomer Adams and I leave you with this saying, strive today, okay? Strive today, thrive tomorrow. So again, thank you so much. This has been Jomer Adams and I hope that you have learned something new today. So please do like, share this video and also please do subscribe to this channel for you to be updated for the latest uploads that I will be doing. So thank you so much and have a great day ahead of you. Thank <laughs> you.